If you haven't had your head in the clouds these past few nights, perhaps you should reevaluate your priorities, at least for tonight. The annual Perseid meteor shower peaks between August 10th and 13th. In fact, Google celebrated the Perseid meteor shower on its homepage yesterday. According to Deborah Netburn of the Los Angeles Times, the best time to view the meteor shower is after 3 a.m. or when the sky is the darkest. You will not need a telescope or any special equipment to view Perseid, and your view will be better the further you are away from artificial light. So what are viewing conditions like on Long Island? This question led me to the Custer Institute and Observatory in Southold, New York. Established in 1927, Custer is the oldest public observatory on Long Island and permits viewing of some of the darkest skies on Long Island. We are joined this morning by Bill Funk, the director at large at Custer Institute and Observatory. Good morning, Bill, and thanks for joining us. Hi, how are you? Very well, thank you. Uh, you know, okay. A little wet this morning, but otherwise all right. But it looks like it's going to clear up tonight, Bill, so it, it seems does. like that's going to be beneficial for people who want to view the meteor shower. Yeah. Right, if they want to stay up till 3 in the morning. <laughs> oh, who and doesn't so want to do that? Yeah, it hasn't <laughs> been a really hot one this year. Right. Uh, oh. But... Well, uh, that's actually, that was my, my first question. I was going to ask you, can you tell us about the perceived meteor shower and, and what you've observed so far, maybe in comparison to other years? Well, it's not that good. <clears throat> uh, other years we've had fireballs, big boluses mm. that you know, light up the sky, and we've had oh, up to 50 or 100 meteors per hour. Wow. This year... Partly because of the moon, because a lot of them are pretty dim. And with that big, bright moon, you just can't see, well, at least half of them. Hmm. Right. And at this time of year, of course, we do have that really full moon that's close to the Earth, or at least it seems that way, where it naturally lights up things at night. So, Bill, are you saying that these meteors are obviously still out there? They haven't gone anywhere. They haven't changed their trajectory. It's just we're unable to see them because of the natural light from the moon as well as, you know, the light coming up. Well, that's it. And every year... It changes. These meteors are basically a bunch of junk that Comet Swift Tuttle left in our orbit a couple of thousand years ago. And uh, the junk, <laughs> over a couple of thousand years, it's never stays the same. So from year to year, we hit big clouds of it, little clouds of it, uh, dust storms. We never know. All right, so tell us. So it, oh, go ahead. Now, uh, we never know what we're actually going to hit when we hit it. It's just that this uh, one of the, it's one of many big clouds in our orbit, mm -hmm. and you can't see them as we're coming up on it. So we just whatever happens happens. Exactly. And some years uh, we hit a lot of them, uh, bigger rocks that end up lighting up the sky, and some years we don't hit many at all. So right. we'll hope for better luck next year. And it's, I mean, there's nothing that we can do about it. I did see what I believe was a documentary featuring Bruce Willis and some others, Ben Affleck, where they went up to space and actually dealt with some asteroids and meteors. But that documentary was a long time ago. So recently, I don't think we've had anything like that. But there is no control over the skies, just like no control over the weather. I mean, we <laughs> get what we get. It's nice if we get a great show, but on sometimes we're not going to. Now, that's about it as far as media showers go. Yes. And there'll be a few more. There's another one going on right now in the southern hemisphere oh. that's a little bit, well, a little bit better, possibly. Okay, so but I haven't anybody, heard too many reports about that. If anybody wants to see it, they just need to hop on a plane and head <laughs> south a few hours and they'll yeah, be good to go. Yeah, just run down there and hopefully <laughs> it's not over by the time they get to Argentina. There you go. Um, <laughs> or Australia. <laughs> oh, even closer. That's, yeah. That only takes a couple of days to get over there, so. Yeah, yeah. Saturday at Custer, we were open and, you know, sky and stargazing. It wasn't that bad. It was fairly clear. Moon, of course, was too bright to see much. Okay. But we, yeah, we didn't really notice that many meteors, if any at all. So actually, that's, that's great. That's a good segue to actually uh, the Custer Institute. Can you tell us where you're located and why this location was chosen for an astronomical observatory? Well, I was, <laughs> we're in South Old on Main Bayview Road. And uh, if anybody wants to come out on Saturday nights, just go to our website, custerobservatory.org, 
and it will uh, give you directions. We're, off, we're just a little bit off the main road, but okay. if you don't know how to get there, it could be tricky. Okay. And how did we get there? Yes. Well, two guys, uh, Perkin and Elmer, were friends, and they ended up founding the Perkin Elmer Corporation that made very uh, pre uh, precision uh, instruments and electronics. They even made half of the uh, mirror in the Hubble Space Telescope, hmm. and now they're pretty much out of business. They, you yeah. know, buyouts and this and that, and who wants to do that kind of thing anymore? Right. That's one but, of those stories uh, that started off happier than it ended. I guess. Wow. <laughs> yeah. But they did. <laughs> but anyway, they uh, they were friends, and they started a men's club basically in South Hold because they had summer places out here, and there were a group of a dozen or so. And they back in the twenty late twenties, they built a little clubhouse. Then a few years later, they built uh, the observatory next to it. They expanded the thing, built another a little building next to it with an observatory on it because they were all into astronomy and stargazing back then. Mm-hmm. And it's all of it's still there. We put a new dome on it. We've got new telescopes, but we've got a little museum where they uh, these guys used to grind their own lenses back then. Wow. And they built the telescopes by hand. Mm. Well, this so is what they did. That's pretty amazing. Of course, things have changed uh, in this day and age. Now, does the location ever have a negative effect just because of how uh, urban an area this is? I mean, all of the light coming off of New York City, all of the light coming from Connecticut, all the light coming from the area. I know I live, you know, kind of center of the island in Huntington. And at night when you look up, you oftentimes don't see any stars. If there's any clouds in the sky, you just get reflection of the light coming from the city and from this uh, this massive urban area. Does that have an effect on the star watching for you guys? Or are you still able yeah, to, of course to see does, quite a bit? The light is the generation of the atmosphere. There's a lot of crud up there. Right. And uh, you don't notice it unless you're really looking for something. Uh, if you go out a couple of really dark places, upstate New York, Pennsylvania, oh, definitely. and out west, and you'll look up and it, it's a different sky completely. The Milky Way is just stunning. Mm-hmm. It's right up there, the way the ancients saw it. Mm-hmm. Here, you see it, but just barely. But as far as, you know, the, the prime locations on Long Island, the darkest spots, you guys at Custer boast some of the darkest. Is that true? That's about it, yeah. Okay. There are uh, other attempted observatories. There's one they're trying to get started in Montauk. Okay. And that's pretty dark down there, too, but not that much better seeing. Gotcha. But there are other, organiza- other astronomical organizations, AOS, Astley, and a couple of others. But they're all up island, and they come out here. Hmm. Okay. So because there's... it's darker and the skies are clearer. Absolutely. You don't get quite as much smog and schmutz in the atmosphere out here. Okay. So we still we have pretty good viewing and there's plenty of stuff to see. Right. And it's a big <laughs> sky up there. Yes. Yeah. Can you uh, can you describe? Uh, you started to talk a little bit about the museum and but describe a little bit about the Custer Observatory facilities. Maybe the types of viewing opportunities a visitor might have if they come to to Custer? Well, we've got uh, two large telescopes, about two feet in diameter, and a whole bunch of smaller ones. Uh, we've got the, the biggest one up in the dome, but then out on the lawn out back and next door, uh, we roll out a whole pile of telescopes, depending on how many people are there and how many people are there to man them. And then we've got a shed built in back. It has three, two telescopes that are automated. They, uh, you don't look into the telescopes. They're connected to cameras and TV sets. Okay. Right. Okay. One of them even goes into the main building, so you can sit. You know, if, if it's cold out, you can sit inside and watch the stars from the comfort of you know, our little <laughs> fireplace. Uh, no. And as a guy, there's a there's a set of enormous binoculars. That the guy built, one of our members, uh, he just a uh, pipe fitter or something, and he, he, just, uh, he, bought, he didn't grind his own lenses, he bought those. Oh, but okay. he built a of binoculars about eight feet long, and that's sitting on the shed. Interesting. Right. Now, how many people do you typically have on a, a night when you're viewing out there? How many people typically show up? And I mean, is it open to everybody? Is it open to the public or just to members of the observatory? How does no, that work? It's open. 
anybody can show up, uh, and we have a it's a donation. We can't ask for permission fee with right. our nonprofit status, but uh, anybody can just show up, and people do. I think our biggest night was about three hundred people showed up. Wow, that's quite a bit. And that kind of that pretty much overwhelmed us. We have a <laughs> small, you know, nobody gets paid. So uh, well, if we paid ourselves, we might get more done. But anyway. All volunteers. Oh, it's very cool. Sometimes we can get overwhelmed. Right. Well, it's very but cool. We're glad you, to have them. It's very cool that you guys are out there providing this service for the community. Yeah. Can you tell us, uh, just I guess, as a for our for our listeners, special events and then your regular hours of operation over at Custer. Regular hours are uh, Saturday nights from dusk to midnight. Sometimes later. Okay. But uh, you know. We all work, so sure. and usually have other things to do on Sunday. <laughs> so we try not to stay out till three or four in the morning. Right, it's totally understandable. Uh, and we don't throw anybody out at midnight, but yeah. And then especially the idea is that we're closing. Yes. Now we're having our jamboree in October. Okay. That's three days of stargazing, astronomy, and lectures, and. Uh, uh, we started out on Friday night with astronomy drinking songs. I'll leave it to your imagination what that is. <laughs> yes. that is. Very right. good. Uh, good. But uh, we have a whole pile of lectures by actual astronomers, you know, people who actually do this and teach this in colleges and things. Very cool. So if, if listeners want to be able to learn more about the Jamboree and about Custer and when they can come visit, how to get there, where should they go? Where should they go to learn more? CusterObservatory.org. That's our website. Okay. All right, and they'll be able to find a schedule of events and find out so much more about the Custer Observatory and just another in a to, long... Yeah, they'll get the general opening hours, and they'll get a, they can find a schedule for the Jamboree in October, the weekend of the 17th. Right. And uh, general history of the place.